Pullman mourns the devastating loss of a young man. A campus comes together to support Tyler Holinsky's family and his teammates. Tonight in this special edition of Creme 2 News at 5, we examine how to prevent and talk about suicide. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan and I'm Jane McCarthy. We wanted to have a serious conversation about something affecting our community suicide. We want to use tonight as an opportunity to give you the information and resources that could save lives. Police say Washington State University quarterback Tyler Holinsky took his own life yesterday. Tonight a memorial is growing on campus. We'll bring that to you in just a moment. We also want to let you know we do have a mental health professional in the studio tonight to answer any questions you may have about how to talk with your family about these events. First, though, from students to coaches to teammates, Halinski's death is being felt all across Pullman and beyond tonight. Sports director Darnay Tripp is in Pullman tonight with how the young quarterback is being remembered. Darnay. Good evening, guys. A quiet day on campus, which you would certainly understand. Certainly a more somber mood than we're accustomed to seeing here at Washington State. You don't have to be on campus for very long to realize that the events that happened Tuesday are weighing heavily here in Pullman. As far as WSU's response, they, of course, released a statement since then. We haven't heard from them. I reached out to a spokesperson to see if I could speak with University President Kirk Schultz or interim AD John Johnson. Neither were made available as the university now attempts to figure out its next steps and how they will address the death of Tyler Holinsky. I also reached out to some former teammates of Tyler Holinsky's uh, to get their response to see if they want to share uh, any memories or recollections of their now former teammate. One close friend responded saying he wanted to make sure it was okay with Holinsky's mom first. It's clear people are being sensitive to the family, which you would certainly understand in a situation like this. Yesterday's tragedy took place with WSU's assistant coaches out recruiting. Mike Leach has called them to return to Pullman for the weekend to be here with the team. Now, one place where the response continues to pour out is on Twitter. Assistant coach Jim Mastro, who is so important in terms of recruiting and bringing athletes to Pullman, said, my heart is absolutely broken over the loss of Tyler. I've struggled mightily to find the words to express my sadness. Tyler was a very special person who epitomized what Cougar football was all about. I will forever be grateful for the great times we shared. Robert Taylor, a senior this past season, RIP, the last words you think you'd have to say to a college teammate. We grinded together, struggled together, partied together. We laughed together. I wish it was something somebody could have said to make him feel a little bit better, shine down on us. Parker Henry played linebacker a couple years ago, waking up this morning still doesn't seem real. From the day you stepped on campus as a 17 year old, you brightened everyone's day with your enthusiasm and personality, myself and everyone who knew you were better for it. I love and miss you already, my friend. Parker also shared a neat story from a couple summers ago when Parker was coaching a six year old T-ball team. And as soon as Tyler found out, he offered to help out with the team, not for credit, or anything like that, just wanted to be there to help out the kids. And the Seattle Seahawks, among so many outside of the WSU community, expressing uh, their sadness and support for WSU. Our hearts, thoughts, and prayers go out to the Tyler Holinsky's friends and family, the entire WSU community, hashtag RIP3. The place on campus where Tyler Holinsky's death is felt most is at the Cougar Pride statue just outside Martin Stadium, the memorial that started last night grew significantly by the time we saw it this afternoon. Signs saying, I love you, Tyler, and rest in peace, as well as pictures of the WSU QB. Uh, one football player came by, sat silently while we were there for about 15 minutes. Uh, there's another sign uh, by the football ops building that says, you'll forever be our comeback kid. Of course, one of the great memories of Tyler Halinsky's career, uh, the dramatic comeback win over Boise State back in September. But again, mostly quiet here on campus a day after the Cougs lost one of their own. Mark Jane, back to you. Washington, my Washington, the crimson and the gray. As students cope with the loss, many are coming together to support one another on campus tonight. Crime Chief Amanda Rowley is also in Pullman tonight outside a growing memorial. Amanda? 
Good evening. Well, this cougar statue behind me not only represents cougar pride at Washington State University, it's also part of a tradition. I remember when I was here as a student at WSU, before every home football game, the football team would come by and touch the statue for good luck. So it only made sense for the cougar marching band, staff, students, and athletes to join here today to sing the alma mater song. As you can see from this afternoon, everyone was arm in arm and comforting each other. The gathering to honor Tyler Holinsky this afternoon was coordinated by Cougar band member Rick Flores and he told me he was the first to lay out candles at the statue last night and he says he had a chance to meet Holinsky earlier this year and only had nice things to say about him. He was a genuine guy like he's just really nice he talked about how much he loved the band support of the team so I came here last night um, as soon as I saw on the Die Hard Kooks page that this was going up, brought a few candle, well, came to light a few candles, and a few of us from the band were here last night, and we sang the alma mater, but we felt like more needed to be done. So Rick and fellow band members decided to invite the rest of the Cougar community today to sing the alma mater song. And those who came brought flowers and even left the Cougar hats they were wearing right off their head and left them at the statue. Now, ASWSU President Jordan Frost was also here today. I had a chance to talk with him, and he said plans are in the works for a sort of candlelight vigil sometime this weekend. Be sure to join me tonight at 6, where I'll share his thoughts on the overwhelming support from support here in Pullman and from alumni near and far. Reporting live in Pullman, Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. Amanda Rowley, live in Pullman, thank you very much. Well, we are having a very serious conversation tonight. We don't often report on suicides, but it is is important to talk about it. Suicide affects all communities, but it is preventable. We want to take a moment to remind you that there are crisis hotlines to help. If you or someone you love needs to talk, Washington State University has a 24 hour hotline at 509-335-2159. There are crisis counselors who are trained to help you there. There is also a national lifeline you can call. That number is 1-800-273-8255. Again, someone will pick up the phone at all hours. If you don't feel like talking, you can text 741-741. It's a free texting service that can connect you with the trained crisis counselor right away. We also know suicide is a very complex issue that can make it difficult to know how to help when someone is struggling. Two on your sides, Whitney Ward joins us now with more on that part of our coverage. Whitney? Good evening. Yes, it is certainly complex. That is kind of an understatement because each individual experience is so individual. Jody Smith here um, from Heritage Health, the clinical director and therapist for mental health services. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Um, we were talking a little bit before the show mm -hmm. got started how important it is to have these discussions, even if they are uncomfortable, yeah. as they so often are. And you said you can't be direct enough. Why is that so important? Well, it's really important to ask the right questions. Questions. So uh, oftentimes when you when a parent or a loved one or even a therapist is concerned about um, someone's intent or ideas of self-harm, we ask, are you thinking of harming yourself? That's not necessarily the right question because for someone who's con contemplating suicide or killing themselves, they're not thinking of, of it as harming themselves. They're thinking about it as, as taking the pain away. Oh, yeah. So asking the question, are you thinking of killing yourself mm -hmm. is really important. And then you talked about if yes, mm -hmm. a lot of people maybe aren't ready for that answer. So what do you do then? What do you ask? Do you have a plan? Okay. H have you thought about how you would do this? You want to determine if that plan is, um, if, if they have means to carry out that plan. And if so, then you need to take action. And these are scary questions to be asking. They're very scary. Certainly, yes. you know, people probably not even ready for the answers they may get. What if someone says, yes, I have thought about it and here's how I would do it? Well, first of all, you want to determine if they have access to the means. So, okay. for example, if someone says, um, my plan is to shoot myself and they have access to guns, you want to secure the guns. Mm -hmm. If they say, I, I want to overdose, that's my plan, then you want to secure the medications and make sure that they, you reduce the access to that lethal means. Um, if their plan is to jump off of the Golden Gate Bridge, they don't have immediate access to that. So you would want to ask a follow-up question. Have you thought of any anything else that you would do? So you really want to determine the lethality of the means that they have expressed that they would use. So there, some people are, are 
are concerned about asking those kinds of direct questions, thinking it might lead them in that direction. Yes. Is that a valid concern? You know, research has shown that um, asking direct questions does not put it in the mind of someone who's not already thinking of committing suicide. So, no, that, that would be a myth. We were talking uh, just a few minutes ago, and you said it is suicide is the number one cause of death among kids 10 to 14, 14. Mm -hmm. which is mind boggling mm -hmm. and terrifying. Yes. So as a parent, so many parents wondering, kind of at a loss, what to even do. How do you have that conversation? And when do you know they're old enough to start having these you know, discussions? What, mm -hmm. Where do you even start? Well, you want to start having discussions about self-care and um, what to do when you're upset or sad or frustrated. And it's also really important to demonstrate to children how to handle their emotions mm -hmm. in ways that are um, developmentally appropriate and ways that express what they're experiencing as opposed to bottling it up inside. I don't think you can talk, start talking about this too soon with your children, not necessarily suicide, mm -hmm. but self-care and what to do when you're feeling down, depressed, angry, upset, how, they, how to handle frustration and disappointment is, is really important. It is often another myth that only certain kinds of people are susceptible to this. We know yeah. that it can strike even in people who don't seem like they would be struggling or should be yes. struggling. Um, so we certainly appreciate your expertise and understanding the complexities of this. This is actually a conversation we're going to go continue now uh, on Facebook. We're going to both go out and uh, we encourage you to come join us on Facebook Live on our CREM2 page so that we can continue this conversation and ask some more direct questions. If you have questions that you want to ask Jody, she's here. She is a, a valuable resource and we're very excited to have her here today. You can ask her your, quest your questions. We will do our best to make sure and answer them. And then on CREM2 News at 6, I will bring back some of those most important key points from that conversation. So I hope you will join us. We'll be back on our CREM2 Facebook page here in just a few moments. Mark and Jane. Back Thank you very much, Whitney. Important conversation mm -hmm, for, for sure. sure. All right, we want to switch gears now for a moment and talk about your forecast. Yes, Tom Sherry in the Weather Center tonight talking rain across the region, Tom. Yeah, rain, and it looks like it's going to be only rain as a lot of mild air begins to drift in. This is the computer model now over the next 12 hours, and as you can see, it's got the rain starting around 9 o'clock tonight, and you can see the temperatures are actually in the low 40s through the overnight hours. So again, a very mild air mass. Look at all of that rain that is headed our way. All that green and those yellows and dark shades of green indicate heavy rain. It is raining now at Snoqualmie Pass rather than snowing. We're looking for an overnight low of 37. Could see heavy rain at times, maybe up to a half inch of rain overnight. And again tomorrow, wind gusts may be gusting 20 to 25 miles an hour. We'll look for a daytime high of 43 degrees. Looks like we're going to see temperatures cool down into the upper 30s for the weekend with a chance of rain and snow showers. I've got 38 on Saturday and 38 degrees again on Sunday. I'll have the rest of your seven day forecast coming right up. Sounds good, Tom. Thank you very much. Well, he was killed in the line of duty and today police departments from all over the Northwest gathered in Western Washington to honor and remember Deputy Daniel McCartney. Officers from Oregon, Idaho, California and here in the Inland Northwest traveled to Pierce County to honor the deputy's life. 650 different police vehicles were there. Well over a thousand law enforcement officers were there as well. After the procession, friends and colleagues gathered at Pacific Lutheran University to pay their respects. McCartney was killed while investigating a home robbery earlier this month. Members from our local departments made their way to the memorial, including the Pullman Police Department. Eastern Washington State Trooper Jeff Seveny from the Washington State Patrol was also there and tweeted out photos from that procession. Mm. Well, if you are the kind of person who wants to hold a yard sale once a month, Spokane Valley says uh, we don't want you to do that. Yeah, they say it has nothing to do with you cashing in and everything to do with being a nuisance. We'll explain coming up after the break. 